Hey, Rivermont family, it's Pastor Brett, and thanks for tuning in to today's Pastor's Devotional. We are continuing our study of the Westminster Shorter Catechism, and today we'll look at question 83, which asks, are all transgressions of the law equally heinous? The answer is that some sins in themselves and by reason of several aggravations are more heinous in the sight of God than others. So in other words, the nature of some sins, as well as the impact those sins have on others, cause them to be more heinous than others. Uh, it's possible that some of you have never thought about some sins being more heinous or more offensive than others. You might think that all sin is an abomination to the Lord, and that is certainly true. But there are indeed some sins which are in fact more heinous and cause more aggravation than others. Uh, for example, if we think about our own laws in the U.S., not all crimes are treated equally. Some crimes, like running a stop sign or trespassing, are considered misdemeanors, while others, like aggravated assault and murder, are felonies. In fact, a person committing murder faces a harsher punishment than someone who commits manslaughter because murder is premeditated and manslaughter is in the heat of the moment or accidental. So even in our judicial system, we see sins as being more heinous than others. So in what way or in what sense are sins more heinous than others? Well, we can categorize the, the more heinous sins into three aggravations. The first aggravation has to do with sins committed by those in power, like politicians or pastors or parents or even the aged. Uh, those who are in places and positions of power who either abuse or lead astray those who are under their charge by their example or by their wrongful choices. Now, there are many instances of this in the Bible. Uh, you have the false prophets of God, of whom he said in Jeremiah 6, they have healed the wounds of my people lightly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. They failed to confront the sin of the people and gave them a false sense of hope and peace. Jesus likewise said in Mark 9, Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, well, it would be better for him if a great millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. The sin of those who abuse their power and influence and lead those under them astray is considered especially heinous to the Lord. The second aggravation we can mention has to do with sins knowingly committed versus sins committed out of ignorance. Again, the Bible is full of examples, but one that stands out to me is the parable of the talents that Jesus tells in Matthew 25. Uh, you remember the servant who received the one talent. Others had received ten and five. This one was afraid of making a bad investment and losing the master's money. So what did he do? Well, he buried it. It's a safe thing to do. And his master answered him in verse 26, You wicked and slothful servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents and cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And so we see that there is a greater heinousness of sin for those who knowingly sin versus those who sin out of ignorance, out of blindness, out of darkness. And there is yet then a third aggravation that we can mention, which has to do with the time sins are committed. For example, sins committed on the Sabbath are considered more heinous than those on other days. Now, for example, Drunkenness and adultery are abominable on any day in the sight of God, of course, but drunkenness and adultery, or really any other such sin, are more heinous before God on the Sabbath. Uh, we could even say that sins committed after repentance and rededication to the Lord are more heinous than the same ones committed before repentance, because we've just told the Lord our desire to turn away from that sin, and what do we do? Well, we sin again. The bigger question, I think, as we think about these three aggravations that are here, and there are others to be sure, but the bigger question um, can be asked in this way, to what end really is such a discussion of the heinousness of particular sins? 
In other words, what are we to do with the knowledge that our sins can be more heinous than other sins? For me, the most obvious answer is that such knowledge should in fact humble me and humble us by the riches of God's mercy, a mercy that is extended to the chief of all sinners. For as Paul writes in 1 Timothy 1, 13 and 14, though formerly I was a blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent opponent, but I received mercy because I acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. And as we comprehend such mercy, such knowledge of our sin should produce in our flesh a holy distaste of our sin, that we reject its pull on our life. And so may God indeed be rich in mercy towards you and towards me as sinners, that we may pursue a life of holiness in light of God's grace, in light of His mercy towards us. Amen.